This call is now being Hello everyone, I'm Rekha Murthy, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Sarvijaya Institute of Technology. Today I'm here to explain uh, related with the Module 2 of the subject Power System Protection and the Module 2 relates with the overcurrent protection and a part of the distance protection. So the main outline today, what I'm going to discuss in this session is the introduction, time current characteristics, overcurrent protective scheme, reverse power or directional relay, directional relay connections and directional overcurrent relay. So these are the topics which I'm going to cover it up. The introduction. So as you know, that a protective relay is nothing but it is the one which is going to operate whenever the load current is a going to exceed or preset value. That is called as an overcurrent relay. So the value of this uh, preset current above which the relay operates is known as its pickup value. So overcurrent relay is usually it will be a cheapest and simplest form of protection. So these uh, relays are mainly used for the protection of like distribution lines, large uh, motors, power equipment, industrial uh, systems, etc. So this overcurrent relays, they are also used in some of the sub-transmission lines. And scheme which we are going to incorporate for the overcurrent relay for the protection of this element of a power system that is known as a overcurrent protection scheme or overcurrent protection. So this overcurrent protection scheme is going to include one or more the overcurrent relays. Now you can look onto this uh, basic diagram. So where it is going to give an in basic information that this overcurrent release, they are being connected with the current transformer. This overcurrent release will be connected with the current transformers. So whenever uh, the CT is going to sense a high current from the preset value, the relay is going to operate right and it will actuate that trip coil of the circuit breaker and it will isolate to the equipment from the electrical system. And as I told, the scheme which you're going to employ, which you're going to incorporate with the overcurrent relay, that is nothing but called as an overcurrent protection scheme. So that is a, a basic introduction to this topic. Now let us move with the time current characteristics. In the time current characteristics, depending upon to the time of operation, the overcurrent relays has been classified into the various groups. What are those? The first one is the definite time overcurrent relay, instantaneous overcurrent relay, inverse time overcurrent relay, inverse definite minimum time overcurrent relay, very inverse time overcurrent relay, extremely inverse time overcurrent relay, all this. So here, uh, in this uh, definite time overcurrent relay, this relay is mainly uh, um, it is being created by applying a intentional time delay after crossing certain pickup value of the current. So we are going to provide the intentional time so that after crossing the pickup value of the current, a definite time overcurrent relay it can be mainly uh, be adjusted to issue a trip output at a definite amount of time. Afterwards, it is going to pick up. So those, uh, it will have a time setting adjustment and pickup adjustment. Usually though, our attracted armature type of a relay with a time element is going to show those characteristics. So how exactly this characteristics looks like? Almost that is this one. So this is a 
definite time of uh, over current really where we will provide uh, some intentional value of a current and after certain that time the uh, relay has to uh, sense the fault so that is going to uh, um, detect the pickup value okay now the next one as i told instantaneous over current relay instantaneous over current relay that uh, this relay is mainly uh, operates as soon as the current in the coil gets higher than the preset value okay instantaneously it will operate it will operate as soon as the current in the coil gets higher than the preset value there is no any intentional time delay is it so there is always an inherent time delay of the order which will be in the order of few milliseconds here also the attracted armature type relays is going to show this type of a characteristic so let me show you that this characteristic will just looks like this okay immediately it will react upon so there is a boundary which you can see that that is a pickup value a uh, maximum current where uh, actually um the relay has to sense the fault if it is above than that the relay has to trip if it is below than that then the relay should not trip that is a, a boundary for this now uh, let me move on with the next type that is a inverse time of over current relay in the inverse time of over current relay we will find that this inverse time is a um, it's a natch uh, this means that a uh, time of operation is inversely varies with the input current so here you can see its characteristic how does it looks like this is what a characteristic so this me uh, here this characteristic of like a uh, uh electro mechanical induction disc relay is very suitable for this over current protection so in this relay if the uh, fault is more severe it would be clear more faster so that is a inverse time of a over current relay okay next coming to the inverse uh, definite time in the inverse definite time um definitely minimum time over current relay and uh, the very inverse time over current relay and extremely inverse time over current relay all these three of them will be uh, shown together so where you will find in that case in the idmt relay that is this type of a uh, relay is going to give an inverse time current characteristic which is at a lower values of the fault current and definite time characteristic at a higher values of a fault current okay so that means this is a combination of the inverse time current characteristic and also a definite time ca ca characteristic so inverse time current characteristic um will be given at a lower values of fault current and a definite time characteristic at a higher values of fault current okay um that is about the idmt relay so you can see the characteristic here uh, which will be a comparison of three of these that is very inverse time and extremely inverse so in this case uh, you will find that uh, idmt will be above at the first and first you will be having a idmt uh, characteristic below that will be having a very inverse time and uh, below the inverse very inverse time we will be provided with a extremely inverse time so in very uh, inverse time over current relay what will happen is um a very inverse time over current relay will give more inverse characteristic than that of a plain inverse relay or idmt relay okay so its time current characteristic will be lying between an idmt characteristic and extremely inverse characteristic okay similarly in the case of like extremely inverse time current character over uh, time current characteristic in that extremely inverse time over current relay it is going to give a time current characteristic which is more than the inverse than that the that of the inverse time and the idmt relays okay so that is a, a, a very extremely inverse time and uh, very inverse relays usually fail in selectivity and extremely inverse time relays are usually employed at that time okay that is uh, about the special all these characteristics of the relays 
now coming to the next topic so in the next topic uh, it relates with the uh, over current protection schemes so in the over current protection schemes they are uh, widely used for the protection of the distribution lines they are widely used for the protection of or distribution lines if you consider uh, like if the fault occurs something uh, there will be uh, three sections of a lines which i am going to sectionalize like a b c okay so these will be the sections of the lines when you are going to consider onto the feeders which you can see that a feeder may be sectionalized and two or more over current relays will be used okay so let us assume that there will be a three sections uh if the like called as a b and c if the fault occurs beyond the c okay beyond the c and make sure that everywhere in each of the section we have provided with a circuit breaker right first the circuit breaker has to sense uh, i mean first the uh, relay has to sense the fault and it has to give a command to the circuit breaker right then only we can isolate the fault so if a fault occurs beyond a c section then the circuit breaker at the substation c only should trip not the other the circuit breakers at a and b should not trip as far as the normal operation is concerned okay so suppose if the suppose if the relay at c is going to fail to operate then the circuit breaker at b should trip as a backup protection similarly if the fault occurs between the b and c the circuit breaker at b should trip the circuit breaker at a should not trip suppose if there is a failure of a relay at the section b then the relay a should trip so like that it will be seen that the relays will be must be selective with each other so for this proper selectivity of the relay uh we need to consider the schemes depending upon to the system condition what are those scheme the first is time current graded system and a combination of both time and current grading now let us discuss what is this time graded system in this scheme the definite time over current relays will be used so when a definite time relay is going to operate for a fault fault current then it starts a timing unit which trips the circuit breaker after a period of time which is quite independent of the fault current so here the operating time of the relays will be adjusted in an increasing order from the far end of the feeder okay now let us see here the difference in the time setting of the two adjacent relays are usually kept at around 0.5 seconds now this uh, difference is to cover the operating time of the relay and the errors in the relay and ct now let us uh, see here that with the fast circuit breakers and modern accurate relays it may be a possible to reduce the time further to around 0.4 seconds also or it can be a 0.3 seconds now let us take these three sections and analyze uh whenever a fault occurs beyond the c then the fault occurs beyond the c then all the relays will come to an action as a fault current flows through all of them of course right but here what will happen the least time setting is what where where do you find the least time setting it is at the c point at the c so it operates after it operates after 0.5 seconds and the fault is cleared now the relay a and b are reset a and b are reset okay that is how the operation takes place if the relay c fails if the relay c fails 
okay then the fault will remain unclear in that situation what will happen in that situation which is the least uh, time taking between taken between the a and b that is here comparatively to the 1.5 second we will consider one second there the relay at b will operate and the circuit breaker at b, uh, b will trip okay if the circuit breaker b also fails suppose if this also fails then after 1.5 second the circuit breaker a will trip but what is the drawback of this scheme is that for the faults near the power source side the operating time is more right do you agree operating time is more towards that power side that is around 1.5 second but here it is at the last towards the load it is 0.5 seconds so if the fault occurs near the power source it involves a large current hence it should be cleared very quickly but in this scheme takes the longest time in clearing the heaviest fault which is found to be an undesirable because the heaviest fault is the most destructive so this scheme is suitable for a system where the impedance between the substations is low okay fine so this is all about the time graded system next coming to the current graded system so in a current graded system this scheme the relay are set to pick up at progressively higher values of the current towards the source so the relay the relays employed in this scheme they are high set or you can say it is a high speed instantaneous over current relays and here the operating time will be kept the same for all the relays which is used to operate which is sorry which is used to protect the different sections of the feeders here the current setting of the relay which mainly corresponds to the fault current level for the feeder sections which has to be protected now let us consider this example wherein um here the so uh, we can see here the relay at uh, b should trip for the fault anywhere between the b and c but it should not operate for a fault beyond c do you agree that is ideally similarly relay at a should trip for a fault between the section a and b the relay at c should trip uh, sorry the relay at uh, c should trip for a fault beyond c that is all ideal operation but this ideal operation is not achieved why because of many reasons because the relay at a is not able to differentiate between the fault whether it is very close to b which may be either on the either side of the b if the fault is in the section bc which is very close to the station b then the relay a understand that it is in the section a ab this happens only when there is a very little difference in the fault current if the fault current occurs at the at the end of the section a and b or in the beginning of the section bc that is one point second thing the magnitude of the fault current it cannot be accurately determined as all the circuit parameters may not be known to you that is second point third point is during a fault there is a transient conditions and the performance of the relays which is not so accurate so because of these three reasons we need to prop we need to obtain a proper discrimination so relays are set to protect only a part of the feeder usually about 80% that is why this scheme cannot protect the entire feeder this system is not used alone so it may be used in conjunction with the idmt relays that is what we can see here so the performance of the instantaneous relays is affected by the dc component of the transients which i have shown in the first figure so the error is been introduced by that uh, uh whatever the dc offset components which has been ca causes the relay to get overreach so you will find there will be a higher value of x by r ratio and which will be a, of a great problem to the system 
so adhesive filter is mainly used to overcome this problem right um so this is how about the current uh, graded system so this is used the scheme is used where the impedance between the substation is sufficient to create a margin of difference in fault currents so the advantage of the system as compared to that of a time graded system is that the operating time is less near to that of a power source that is what the advantage of this okay now coming to the combination of current and time grading this scheme combination of a current and grade uh, in that scheme is widely used for the protection of the distribution lines idmt uh relays are usually employed in the scheme at the in the case of a combined cases so they have a combined features of both the current as well as a time grading idmt relays which will have a current as well as a time setting arrangement so the current setting of the relay is made according to the fault current level of the particular uh, section to be protected and the relays are set to pick up uh, progressively at a higher current levels towards the source side and the time setting is also been done in a progressively increasing order towards the source side the difference in the operating times of two adjacent relay will be kept around uh, 0.5 seconds that is how about the combined uh, uh, combination of both the current and time grading system okay so this is what about the time grading current grading and the combination of both now uh, let's go next uh, part of a uh, new topic that is the reverse power or a directional relay so let me consider a diagram where this is a electro so here the flux is the uh, uh, two flux from both of these each of the at your quantities that is flux psi1 and psi2 and eddy currents with psi2 okay so here the flux psi1 and here the flux psi2 will be produced and both will interact in such a way that it is going to produce a torque so similarly the psi2 similarly the psi2 the flux psi2 also induces some eddy currents in the disk which will interact with the flux psi1 and it is going to produce a torque so that resultant torque is going to roto the torque which is uh, the, the the torque which is produced it will be proportional to that of both of these quantities because due to these two quantities only uh, you can flux can be produced right so therefore the torque will be proportional to v into i into cos phi where cos, uh, psi is nothing but it is a phase angle between the v and i so the torque is maximum when the voltage and current are in phase so in order to produce this maximum torque during the fault condition when the power factor is very poor then we are going to make use of a compensating winding and also the shading coils will be provided in order to make the maximum torque during the fault conditions the power factor will be very poor that is why a compensating coil a circuit and as well as a shading coil will be provided here okay uh, as uh, we had discussed in the previous modules that uh, torque which is produced by an induction relay will be given by t is equal to psi1 into psi2 into sin theta which is directly proportional to that of i1 into i2 into sin theta where the flux psi1 and psi2 are the fluxes okay and uh, the angle which is between the psi1 and psi2 or i1 and i2 it will be theta if one of the actuating quantity is voltage and the current flowing in the voltage coil it is going to lag behind the voltage by an angle of 90 degree so let us see that phasor diagram assume that here uh 
let us say the voltage v and the current i1 which is uh, flowing in one of the coil and that is nothing but the current coil that is a lower part of the u shaped uh, electromagnet so that is the current i and i2 is again further lagging behind the voltage v the load current i1 lags the v by an angle of psi then the angle theta between the i1 and i2 is also equal to 90 degree minus psi so due to this we will get torque equation as i1 into i2 into sin of 90 degree minus psi which is again directly proportional to that of which is again directly proportional to that of i1 into i2 into cos psi which is nothing but again it is directly proportional to that of v into i cos psi okay so here an induction uh, uh, move on with a uh, an induction cup type of a uh, construction where the induction cup type of a directional relay that is also used to produce a torque which is proportional to that of vi into cos phi so let us go through that uh, type of uh, the directional relay okay this is a in induction type here uh, two opposite poles this is one and this is another two this is north and south and here also north and south so two opposite poles are energized by the voltage coil and the other two poles again they are energized by current you can which you can observe here here voltage is a polarizing quantity voltage is a polarizing quantity and the polarizing quantity is the one which is going to produce a one of the two fluxes the polarizing quantity will be taken as a reference with respect to the other quantity which is nothing but a current in this case okay which is nothing but a current in this case now the interaction of these two quantities again the flux will be produced and you will find there will be an interaction between the two fluxes then the torque will be produced torque which is produced is positive when when the power factor is positive it means the value psi should be less than the 90 degree whenever you find the psi is more than the 90 degree then the torque will be negative how it is you can see for example this is the what the voltage p which you are taken it as a reference and here you are going to get uh, the normal uh, condition we will find that the negative negative torque is produced how see here what will happen at a particular relay location when the power flows in the normal direction the relay is connected to produce a negative torque and the angle between the actuating quantities which is been supplied to the relay it will be kept around 180 degree minus psi to produce a negative torque so if due to any of the reason the power whenever the power flows in the reverse direction the relay is going to produce a positive torque and it is going to operate so in that condition the angle between the actuating quantities psi should be kept less than the 90 degree in order to produce the positive torque so what you observed is at the normal condition itself it is going to produce a negative torque whenever there is an abnormal condition the relay will start to operate and it is going to produce a positive torque so for a normal flow of a power the relay is supplied with the v and the current minus i okay for a reverse flow the actuating quantity is becoming v and i that's a positive i then the torque is becoming v into i cos phi that is what the positive so this can be achieved by easily reversing the current coil how to reverse that current coil which you can see here okay so this is how uh, in this fashion we are going to connect the um, to produce a negative torque initially so here the relaying units is going to supplied with the single actuating quantity which we are going to we have discussed earlier and um, 
this is what about the reverse power or a direct strain drilling okay so make sure that at the uh, abnormal condition we want a torque which is to be produced e should be v into i cos phi we don't we don't find any negative symbol it is a uh, almost positive that means at the abnormal condition we are getting v into i cos phi but at normal condition we have to assume that the current or the power is flowing in the reverse order that is minus i that is what you can see in this phasor diagram okay that is what the meaning of uh, uh, having a reverse power or a directional relay next coming to directional relay connections see whenever we find there is a close up fault occurs the voltage usually becomes low and the directional relay may not develop a sufficient amount of torque for its operation under that condition what will happen under that fault condition the power factor will be very low due to which there will be insufficient amount of torque if the relay is connected in an normal way to develop a torque which is proportional to v into i cos phi then these type of problems can be overcome but to get a sufficient torque during all the types of fault with the respective of the locations with respect to the relays or the relay locations which is to be modified so each relay is energized by the current from its respective phase and the voltage from the other two phases so how to do that so there are two methods of connections one method is known as a 30 degree connection and the other one is called as a 90 degree connections so in 30 degree connection means the current coil of the relay of phase a of phase a is energized by a phase current ia and its line voltage is v a to c v i cross a to c similarly the relay in b is energized by the current ib and the voltage is v with the b to a similarly the relay in phase c with the current ic and the voltage is v c to b this is what we can see in the phasor diagram so the relay will be designed in such a way that to develop a maximum torque when its current and voltage are in phase so this condition with a present uh, connection can be satisfied whenever the system power factor is around 0.8666 lagging okay next coming to 90 degree connection 90 degree connection is uh, much better it is going to give a better performance under most of the circumstances so in this connection the relay in the phase a is energized by the ia and the voltage will be from b to c b to c earlier it was a to c so it is b to c similarly b phase relay by b is getting energized by the Uh, current ib and the voltage is uh, from c to a similarly for the c relay it is also energized by the ic and the voltage is from a to b so like this the relays will be designed in order to develop a maximum torque so when the relay current is going to lead the voltage by around 45 degree and it will have some internal compensation so for all the types of faults Uh, l to l l to g or two times of l uh, two sorry two l to g three phase and uh, the phase angle will be seen by the relay it should be well below the 90 degree so this connection is going to ensure the adequate voltage polarization except for a three phase close up fault when the voltage is on all the phases becomes very small so this is about the connections next coming to the directional overcurrent relay in this directional overcurrent relay mainly operates whenever the current is going to exceed a specified value in a specified direction so it contains a two relaying units here which you can see one is the overcurrent unit and the another one is the directional unit for the directional uh, control the secondary winding of the overcurrent unit is kept open so when the directional uh, uh, unit operates 
it closes the open contacts of the secondary winding of the overcurrent unit so thus we can see that a directional feature will be contributed to the overcurrent relay so the overcurrent unit may be either it can be a watt meter type or it can be a shaded pole type so in a shaded pole type the opening is made in the shading coil okay which is in this case a wound coil instead of an ordinary copper strip so this is what about the directional overcurrent relay so in next session i am going to discuss about the protection of the parallel uh, feeders and protection of the ring mains and also some of the earth fault and phase fault protection thank you for watching this video